Have you ever wondered how many people are missing in your state? Keep watching. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to World According to Briggs and a video about missing persons. A couple weeks ago we did a video about the 10 states with the most missing people per capita. After that video, I got a bunch of emails and a lot of comments wondering how many people in total are missing from each state and what state has the most, things like that, not just the per capita. On this list, I'll give you both for all 50 states. That number, at least the missing persons number, fluctuates daily as people are reported. So most stats, most organizations or jurisdictions that collect these stats for their year end review don't really count a person unless they've been missing over 30 days. And that's because 70% of all missing persons cases are solved with within 30 days and 90% are solved within a year. This list is from 2020. So what's considered a missing person? A missing person is defined as anyone whose whereabouts is unknown, no matter what the circumstance of the disappearance. They can be considered a lost person, someone who has voluntarily gone missing, or someone who is missing against their will. For whatever reason, their family doesn't know where they go or what happened to them, their friends, family, whatever. Now, obviously this is just going by the total number, so the states with a higher population are obviously going to have a lot more missing people. That's just how numbers work. So we're gonna take a look at all 50 states right now. Number 50. Rhode Island. Obviously, Rhode Island's gonna start this list off. It's one of the least populated states. They don't have a lot of people, so they're not gonna have a lot of missing people, just the law of averages. The missing people in Rhode Island include Adam Charles Emery. He is a white Caucasian male, and he's been missing since November 10th, 1993. That is a day after he was convicted of murder. While out on bail and prior to sentencing, his vehicle was located at the top of Newport Bridge in Newport, Rhode Island. Obviously, they investigated this to find out if he actually jumped or if he's staging a disappearance. Him and his wife. His wife was missing too. Sadly, a year later, a skull was located and it was his wife's not his. He's been missing ever since. Rhode Island has 20 people missing and that's 1.9 for every 100,000 residents. 49. South Dakota. Again, not a lot of people in South Dakota, so you're not gonna have a lot, but they do have a civil rights activist from Alabama that was last seen in South Dakota in 1973 that is missing. Perry Ray Robinson Jr. is missing from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. He traveled to South Dakota from Alabama to participate in the American Indian Movement, takeover of Wounded Knee. They don't know what happened to him. They know he made it there. They don't know what happened to him at all. He would be 83 years old right now. South Dakota has 23 people missing, and that's 2.6 for every 100,000 residents. Number 48, North Dakota. Hey, look, it's South Dakota's neighbor. Just like South Dakota, they don't have a whole bunch of people or a whole bunch of missing people. But one they do have missing is Kenneth Edward Tank. He was last seen on December 2nd, 1971. He'd be 77 years old right now, and he was last seen leaving the Ralph's Corner Market in Moorhead. It's since been demolished, and he wasn't there when they demolished it, I guess, because he's still considered missing. North Dakota has 31 people missing, giving them 4.1 for every 100,000 residents. Number 47, New Hampshire. The Granite State doesn't have a lot of people missing. They don't have a large population, but they don't have a lot of people missing. One person that has been missing since 1963 is Alexander Haig Tafferlin. I hope that's his name. Here it is. T-A-F-R-A-L-I-A-N. Tafferlin, or Tafferlane, whatever, was a classically trained pianist, successful aluminum siding salesman, and bookie who disappeared on June 10th, 1963, when his wife and daughter were visiting family in California. He was last seen flashing a giant wad of cash in a Manchester social club. You know, I bet it isn't the piano playing or the aluminum siding that got him disappeared. May have been the cash, or being a bookie, either one. He'd be 112 years old right now if we could find him, but I don't think we will. New Hampshire has 35 people missing, and and that gives them 2.6 for every 100,000 residents. Number 46, Wyoming. Wyoming's one of the least populated states, but they have a good amount of people missing for the amount of people that they have in the state. And a lot of that has to do with all the wide open spaces they have. One person that is missing, Dennis Eugene Johnston. He's been missing since 1966. He'd be 63 years old right now because he went missing at eight years old at Yellowstone National Park. Dennis was last seen at a picnic area a quarter mile north of Canyon Junction. He was there with his family, mom, dad, and sister. And they were having lunch at a picnic area and he just wandered off and was never seen or heard from again. The family stayed at the site for two weeks trying to find him with obviously other people trying to locate him, rescue teams and whatever. They never did. Family returned to California, never knowing what happened to Dennis. Wyoming has 45 people missing and that's 7.8. Like I said, a good percentage of people missing in this state. 45, Vermont. 
Vermont has a lot of woods and a lot of places for people to go missing. They don't have a lot of people, but they still got a lot of woods. Of the missing people, they have Donald E. Myers. He's been missing since January 27th, 1971. He boarded a private aircraft en route to Rhode Island, and the aircraft went missing. They believe it crashed into Lake Champlain during heavy weather. He or the plane was never recovered. Vermont has 54 people missing, giving them 8.7 for every 100,000 residents. 44, Delaware. Delaware isn't a really big state, but they got a lot of people missing. Well, not a lot, but they got a good number. One of those missing people is Tina Faye Kemp. No relation to the girl from Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock. She went missing in 1979 at the age of 14. Tina Faye Kemp lived with her family a half mile south of Felton, Delaware, in a rural area. On Saturday, February 3rd, 1979, Tina reportedly walked away from her residence after helping her family hang laundry outside. She'd never been seen or heard from again. Tina had run away before on two previous occasions and she had a local boyfriend that she was close to, but the family or the boyfriend never saw or heard from her after she walked away from doing the laundry. Foul play is strongly suspected. Tina's disappearance was the day before a heavy snowstorm, so that really hampered their ability to track down where she was. She would be 56 years old right now. Delaware has 58 people missing, giving them six for every 100,000 residents. Number 43, Nebraska. Nebraska is another state that doesn't have a really big population. They have Omaha and Lincoln. That's about their only real decent sized cities. The rest is pretty much small towns and rural. So they don't have a lot of people, but they got a good amount of people missing. One of them includes Mary Alice Clark. She's been missing since 1972. She was 14 years old. She's an African-American girl and she was last seen getting into a car near the Bali High Lounge with someone nobody knew who it was. They just know the car had Chicago, Illinois license plate. That's it. Nobody's ever seen or heard from her again. She'd be 62 years old right now if she was still alive. Nebraska has 61 people missing, giving them 3.2 for every 100,000 residents. Number 42, Montana. Montana doesn't have a lot of people, but they got a strange amount of missing people including Robin Ann Petinanto. She's been missing from Whitefish, Montana since 1975. They don't really know what happened. She was last seen in Whitefish, and that's it. She was 14 when she went missing. She'd be 60 years old right now. Montana has 71 missing people, and that gives them 6.8 for every 100,000 residents. Number 41, Kansas. They don't have a lot of people living in the state, but they got a weird amount, and that includes Jeremy R. Coots. He is a young man. Well, at least he was. He was four years old when he went missing. He'd be 48 right now. He disappeared on February 8th, 1977 from Atkinson, Kansas. There's no description of how he went missing. They just said he's been missing. But they do give details on what he was wearing. He had a fur coat with a hood, light colored pants, blue shirt, brown cowboy boots with a bird design. Kind of makes me sad. He probably loved those boots. Kansas has 81 people missing, giving them 2.8 for every 100,000 residents. Ah, that's not that bad, I guess. I mean, anyone missing is bad, but still. Number 40, Iowa. The Hawkeye State is just like the other states around here, Kansas, Nebraska. Not a lot of things going on. They don't have anyone terribly exciting, but... If you watch the movie Casino and you know anything about mob history of Vegas and New York and all that, there's a lot of people buried in the cornfields of Iowa. 86 people are missing in Iowa, giving them 2.7 for every 100,000 residents. Number 39, Idaho. A lot of open space in Idaho and a lot of woods, mountains, and everything else. So there's a good opportunity for a lot of people to go missing here, not just moving out of the state. That includes Lillian E. Ritchie. She's been missing since February 9th, 1964. Lillian Ritchie was last seen around 2 a.m. of February 9th, 1964. She was accompanied by two men from a bar in Garden City, Idaho. And then one of the men drove her home to Nampa, Idaho. She was never been seen or heard from again. So yeah, it's kind of weird. Bunch of her stuff was missing, like she had packed and left. She'd be 109 years old right now. Idaho is 101 people missing. That means there is 5.9 for every 100,000 residents. Number 38, Hawaii. Talked about this before when we did the last missing persons video. Hawaii seems kind of like a hard place to be losing people when you look at it one way. It's an island. If people leave, there's got to be a paper trail. But then again, there's the ocean and you can get lost in the ocean, never be seen or heard from again. Hawaii has 107 people missing. And that's 7.5 per every 100,000 residents. 37, Utah. Utah is a desert state and a lot of people like to leave there unannounced. There's a big problem with that. Now, I wouldn't say a problem, but it happens kind of often with, uh, you know, the under 20 crowd. Utah has 107 people missing. That's only 3.4 for every 100,000 residents. 36, Maine. Maine was in our last video about missing persons, and 
they have a lot missing for the size of the population they have. They're missing 108 people. That's 8.1 for every 100,000 residents. Number 35, Mississippi. If ever there was a state that you'd want to go missing from, Mississippi is that state. That includes Nerissa Franklin. She's been missing since December 30th, 1989 from Guthrie, Mississippi. She was 15 years old when she went missing and she ran away from a foster home. Nobody has any clue what happened to her after she ran away from this place. She'd be 47 years old right now. Mississippi has 115 people missing. That means they've got 3.9 for every 100,000 residents. Number 34, West Virginia. I'm surprised West Virginia is here, and I'm sure if West Virginia wasn't the way it kind of is, there'd probably be a lot more people reported missing because there's some sections of West Virginia where they don't even know who's living there, really. It's, it's a weird state. It's a beautiful state. The Mountain State is amazing. They got 120 people missing. That's at least reported, and that means 6.6 .6 for every 100,000 residents. 33, Massachusetts. Massachusetts doesn't have as many missing as I think they should. If you went back way far in history, they had a lot of funky stuff going on there during the colonial times, Salem witch trial days, things like that. I'm sure it would be very interesting. But currently they have 126 people missing, giving them 1.8 for every 100,000 residents. Number 32, New Mexico. New Mexico has always had a runaway problem. That's like been going on there forever. But that's not what happened with the most disturbing one. This is Sharon Lee Gallegas. She was four years old at the time of her abduction in 1960. She was kidnapped on Thursday, July 21st, 1960, in the alley behind her house. Sharon would have been five on September 5th, and she was described as having light brown to blondish hair and a light complexion. At the time of the abduction, an Anglo man, white man, described as fair-haired and thin, drove with the car which sped south onto 5th Street after Sharon was kidnapped. There was a woman in the car described as short and heavy set in her 30s with dirty blonde hair. The couple had been stalking Sharon for the last week. After church the previous Sunday, they were seen with two younger kids in the car, a small girl and a freckled-faced boy. The woman offered Sharon's mother a job, which she said no, and that was that. A week or so later, that's when the abduction happens. I guess the woman asked Sharon if she wanted to come with them. They were going to buy her clothes and candy. Sharon refused, so the woman grabbed her by the arm, dragged her in the car, and off they went. They've never seen her again. New Mexico has 143 people missing. That's 6.8 for every 100,000 residents. Wisconsin. I don't know why you'd run away from Wisconsin. I mean, it's got a lot of open land, good place to hide a body if they're dead. I don't know. People don't usually run away from Wisconsin, but they have 149 missing people, giving them 2.6 for every 100,000 residents. 30, Indiana. The Hoosier State seems to be missing a lot of people. They have 174, gives them 2.6 for every 100,000 residents. Minnesota, it really starting to seem like these go in clumps. Like, you know, for a while there, we were looking at just the Midwest. Now we're up there in the upper Midwest. Weird. Anyway, Minnesota has 179 missing persons active right now, and that gives them 3.2 for every 100,000 residents. Number 28, Maryland. Maryland's not a big state, but it's got Baltimore, which takes up most of the state, and a lot of bad things happen there. One interesting case is that of Tracy Lynn Mosley. Tracy was last seen by a friend around 2.45 a.m., April 17, 1995. They had dropped her off after they'd gone out, and she was never seen or heard from again. Her purse was found close to where she was dropped off, but it had all her ID and all her money and everything, so obviously the police suspect foul play. There's never been a trace of Tracy since that night. 27, South Carolina. South Carolina always has people missing. One that I've been following for a long time was that of... Brittany Drexel. Brittany Drexel was a girl from New York, actually, and she went down to Myrtle Beach for spring break. She had lied to her parents about where she was going. They told her not to go down there, so she lied, and she went anyway. She was last seen wearing a white, black, teal, and gray top, along with black shorts. She, there's a couple videos of her leaving hotels late that night, right before she just disappeared off the earth. Now, there's been a lot that's gone into this, including finding her phone in another town. And later on, a uh, jailhouse informant pinned it on this guy and this group of criminals that were in the area, like they abducted her. And since then, the FBI has said they don't trust that guy. It's just this weird case. She's been missing since April 25th, 2009. It's a really sad case. She was 17 years old. South Carolina has 184 people missing. That's three 
0.7 for every 100,000 residents. 26, Nevada. Nevada's had people missing forever. They always say there's a lot of bodies buried out in the desert. I don't know how true that is, but it seems reasonable, especially when you know it's history of the mob and all that other stuff in the early days of Las Vegas. Nevada has 192 people missing, and that's 6.4 for every 100,000 residents. 25, Connecticut. Connecticut is a place that I'd probably run away from if I was there. Someone complained the other day that I'm always bagging on Connecticut. Connecticut's got some problems and they never seem to want to fix it. That's why I bag on Connecticut all the time. Same goes for like Mississippi, Arkansas, a couple other places. Connecticut has 197 people missing and that's 5.5 for every 100,000 residents. Hey look, 24, Arkansas. Arkansas has got a lot of woods and a lot of criminals in places like Pine Bluff, Little Rock, and all over the place. They've got some really weird small towns out in the middle of the woods, so there's a good chance you can go missing if you end up in the wrong place. Arkansas has 200 people registered as missing. That's 6.7 for every 100,000 residents. 23, Alabama. Alabama's just like Arkansas, a lot, shares a lot of the same problems and a lot of the same stories. Alabama has 204 people missing and that's 4.2 for every 100,000 residents. 22, Virginia. Virginia is kind of weird because I saw a couple different reports that said they had more than what the FBI was reporting. It's really strange. I don't want to get into it because we'll go down a rabbit hole. But Virginia has 239 people missing. That's 2.8 for every 100,000 residents. 21, Kentucky. Kentucky is a strange state in so many different ways, but when it comes to missing people, they have quite a lot of them. Like Heather Teague, female, obviously by the name Heather in case she didn't get tipped off. She's been missing since August 26, 1995. She was last seen sunbathing at Newburg Beach in Spotsville, Kentucky. Now, witnesses say while Heather was sunbathing alone, kind of a little bit away, a man came out of the woods wearing a wig and a mosquito net, no shirt, with a gun, and drug her into the woods. The police were called right away. They did a search. They kind of tracked down a guy that was a suspect, but when the police got to the house to question him, he pushed his own off button. Kentucky has 248 people missing, giving them 5.6 for every 100,000 residents. Number 20, Georgia. Georgia has a lot of people missing also. Not as many as per capita as Kentucky, but Georgia's got a lot of backwoods areas, and that's how a lot of people go missing here, and they have a lot of runaways. There are 250 people missing, giving them 2.4 for every 100,000 residents. 19, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is one of those states where a lot of people run away when they're teens. That's just what happens. Sometimes they never make contact or something happens to them after they've run away. Oklahoma has 252 people missing, giving them 6.4 for every 100,000 residents. Now, before we get to number 18, I got to tell you something. I originally started off this video and I was going to give you stories about every state and a missing person in them, but I got really depressed and it was really sad and it was hard to finish this video. So I had to cut back on those a little bit. I hope you understand. It's, it's really just, just a depressing subject. All right. On to number 18, Louisiana. Louisiana's always had a problem with people going missing, whether it's runaway or disappearing in the woods or meeting foul play. But nobody knows what happened to Raylene Helsley in 1983. Raylene was at home alone for approximately one hour. She was only 12 years old. When her parents returned to the house, Raylene was missing. They have no idea what happened. She'd be 50 years old right now. 17, Colorado. Colorado has a lot of mountains and a lot of people just go missing in the mountains. It also had a big hippie movement back in the 70s and stuff. So a lot of people kind of just picked up and left back then. They have a lot of missing persons from the 1970s. Colorado has 292 people missing, giving them 5.2 for every 100,000 residents. 16, New Jersey. I wonder how many people left New Jersey and didn't contact anyone because they just want to be done with New Jersey. You know, they want to put it in the rearview mirror and forget it ever happened. So they never contact friends or anything. They just leave and land someplace like Texas and call it good. New Jersey has 299 people missing. That's 3.3 for every 100,000 residents. Number 15, Alaska. Now, when I tell you the numbers here, you're probably gonna think I'm wrong. Unless you watch the last video, then you know Alaska's got this thing about missing people. They have so few people there, the amount of people that they have missing is a lot per capita. Here we go. Alaska has 309 people reported missing. Because there's so few people, that's 41.8 for every 100,000 residents. Yeah, you heard me right. 41 people missing for every 100,000 residents. I think the next on this list is maybe 6.4 or maybe 7 or something like 6.6, 8.1, there it is. 8.1 was the other highest. They're 41.8. That's crazy. Number 14, Missouri. 
We are in the 300s now. Missouri's got a lot of people missing, and oddly enough, they find a lot of bodies out there that clear up a lot of their missing person cases. One they haven't found is Jessica Ann Kinsey. She was last seen on December 26, 1995 in Union, Missouri. She was 14 years old. She may be with an adult male companion, at least at the time. She has a small scar on the inside of her left forearm, near her elbow, and may have a tattoo on her neck with the word Capone. Yeah, that's what every 14-year-old should have tattooed on their neck, Capone. Back then, she was known for wearing sunglasses, and she was last seen in Cloverdale, Indiana. Now, if she took off with an older dude, you know, let's say he was in his 20s or something, she was in 14, he's obviously going to be in some big trouble. Granted, this was over 20 years ago. If she's still with that dude, you know she's still hiding. I mean, if she doesn't have a problem with the dude, if she ever pisses her off, you know she's just gonna get on the phone and said, oh yeah, I'm Jessica Ann Kinsey and this 25-year-old dude back then took me away. So yeah, I could see if she's still hiding because of that. Missouri has 316 people missing, giving them 5.2 for every 100,000 residents. 13, Illinois. Illinois has got Chicago and Chicago's got a lot of weird crap going on there all the time and always has. There was a lot of bodies missing way back when. And these days, uh, you know, they still get them, but not like it was in the old days like the 30s and 40s. Illinois has 317 people missing. That's 2.5 for every 100,000 residents. Number 12, North Carolina. North Carolina's got a lot of people missing. There's no real hardcore reason why. It's not like they got a lot of mob ties, not like they have a big runaway problem. They just got a lot of people missing. North Carolina has 327 people missing, and that's 3.2 for every 100,000 residents. Number 11, Ohio. Ohio's got a lot of people missing, and it goes way back, all the way back to February 14th, 1945, when Mary Jane Van Glider went missing. Mary left her family in West Virginia to move to Ohio. She worked at the Wilkins Army Air Force Depot in Shelby, Ohio, but lived in Plymouth, Ohio. Mary had filed for a divorce from her husband, but withdrew the petition on February 14th, 1945. I guess Valentine's Day changed old feelings and, you know, that was that. That was the last time she was also contacted. She was in touch with her children via mail, but the contact abruptly stopped. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. Ohio has 358 people missing, giving them 3.1 for every 100,000 residents. Number 10, Tennessee. 10, Tennessee, that's kind of odd. Not as odd as how many people they got missing. Tennessee has 361 people missing. That gives them 5.4 for every 100,000 residents. I wonder how many people are missing because they came across the wrong person moonshine still. Number nine, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, I'm surprised, is this high up on the list. People in Pennsylvania are usually really decent to each other, and it's a nice place to live, so I don't see why people would move out all the time. But apparently, they got 401 people missing, giving them 3.1 for every 100,000 residents. Number eight, Oregon. Yeah, we got a lot of people missing up here. That includes Sigmund Myers. Sigmund Myers has been missing since 1920, January 1st to be exact. He's five foot nine, and he weighs 165 to 175 pounds. His family believes he's been missing since 1920. They're not really sure because back then they didn't have internet. He was 44 years old when he went missing and he would be 145 years old right now. If anyone has any information on where Sigmund might be, his family would really like to make contact with him. So, you know, if you have any information, please contact the Myers family in Portland, Oregon. Oregon has 432 people missing. That's 10.4 for every 100,000 residents. Number seven, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan, and all these were on our last list. Obviously, we're in the last, we're in the top 10. Well, not all of them, some of them are. But Michigan's got a lot of people missing. A lot of that has to do with Detroit. There are 556 people missing in Michigan. That's 5.6 for every 100,000 residents. Number six. New York. This one shocks me. New York, you'd think, would be number one or two, you know, being one of the most populous states, a lot of chances for people to go missing, but they're really not that bad considering they're number six. Now, I'm sure if we started measuring all the way back to the early 1800s, New York City's been around a long time. We could probably have more, but they only go back to about 1901 normally, so this is what they have. The Empire State has 606 people missing, giving them 3.1 for every 100,000 residents. Number five, Washington. Washington was on the other list because they got a pretty high rate of people missing. And like I said in that last video, they've always had a lot of serial killers. They got a lot of preppers living there and a lot of people like to wander into the woods. A lot of people just are homeless in Washington. That's just a sad reality of the state. Every state has them, but Washington's pretty bad. And a lot of people live in the woods surrounding Seattle and other places. Washington currently has 643 people missing. That's 8.7 for every 100,000 residents. 
Number four, Arizona. The rate here is gonna blow you away in case you didn't watch the last video. Arizona has a lot of people missing, and like I said in the last video, which I'll repeat because it is important, they always say Arizona doesn't have a real missing persons problem. Mexico does, because that's normally where the people end up. Arizona currently has 915 people missing. That's 13 for every 100,000 residents. It's a lot of people. I mean, that's only second to Alaska. Number three, Texas. Finally cracking the thousand here. Texas has a lot of people missing, they always have. One of the many people missing from Texas is actually Norman Lamar Prater. Prater, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but anyway, he's gone missing from Dallas, Texas in 1973. He was 16 years old. He'd be 64 years old right now. He was last seen leaving his home on January 14th, 1973. He said he would be back in a short while, but never returned. Norman has not been seen or heard from since. Nobody has a clue about this kid. Texas has 1,246 people missing right now that's 4.4 for every 100,000 residents number two Florida Florida's got a lot of people missing they got a pretty high rate too a lot of weird stuff's gone on there over the years and actually one of the highest rates of missing people in the country is the Miami area during the 1980s that's kind of strange there are 1252 people missing from Florida right now that's six for every 100,000 residents All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link down below. Please check it out. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. All right, on to number one. And number one, look, it's everyone's favorite, California. California blows the competition out of the water with missing people. I mean, we got serial killers, we got people landing in Hollywood and then just disappearing. All kinds of weird stuff goes on in California, including the curious case of Sergeant Jeffrey Allen Coonrant. Coonrant was at Fort Ord, California, where I was stationed. I was actually stationed when he went missing. I remember it very well. He had gone to Marina. Well, he had a friend drop him off in Marina, which is a town right outside the gates of Fort Ord. And they have no idea what happened to him after that. They have no details, no nothing. And there's always these rumors and these urban legends that went around about him after he disappeared. I heard he was a spy and he disappeared on purpose. Other people were saying he was actually part of the CIA and this is how they make you disappear from the military. But he was a sergeant at Fort Ord and just went to Marina and nobody knows what happens after his friend drops him off. It's really weird because that's a small town. You'd think someone would have seen something, but no, nothing. And you know, when you're in the military, they got fingerprints, they got everything on you. You're bound to turn up someplace. He never did. Nobody knows what happened to him. Here's where it gets really ugly about California. If you remember, Florida had 1,252 missing people, and that's a lot. California has 2,133. Granted, it's the most populated state in the country, but that's a lot of people missing. That gives them 5.4 for every 100,000 residents. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.